Okay, hey everybody. We are here today to have a look at lighting. So shooting with one light is really so simple that I don't think it's necessary to show you a full behind the scenes tutorial video. Instead, what I'm rather going to do is I'm gonna show you some end results and we'll talk our way through that and I'll maybe sketch one or two lighting diagrams, but it's simple. It's generally a model or two models and one light that is gonna be moving around slightly. Nothing more to it. If you're a little bit afraid of strobe lighting because you're uncertain of where the light's falling, then a constant light is a great way to work. You can see exactly where the light is falling when you are directing your model. Hopefully they look a little bit better than me. But tungsten lights today, warm lights, balanced at 3200 Kelvin. All of your lighting will vary very slightly depending on the age of the globe and depending on the diffusion in front it might be slightly more yellow so you'd go between 3200, 3100, 3000 somewhere around about there 2900 in extreme cases and you'll find your balance on tungsten lighting absolutely love it myself chimera lights with a grid on the front they're not very big these are the small lights so 60 by 90 a1 size light nothing like the massive octas but you get an exquisite beauty light off of these because you can always see where the light's falling. We've got Liz and Dion again. They're a great on-screen couple for beauty work, for fashion work. The stories that they tell are magnificent. Dion's got an Eastern look. Liz has got a European look. Liz is 193 and Dion is about 165, 167. She'll probably kill me for that. Dion's look is very soft. Liz's look is a lot more aggressive, quite a hard look. Together, they make absolute magic. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to quickly use this nice clean slate on the left-hand side over here to draw a quick illustration of the shoot. So here we had Liz and Dion. Over here, we had our light source, and um, here is the little birdie with the camera. Now, generally throughout the images that you're going to see in this tutorial the light might have moved a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right other than that the only changes were that i might have pushed the light slightly higher or lower to accommodate for instance when the girls are sitting over here i would have dropped the light down to a much lower level than when liz is standing at 193 with heels on she's over two meters so my light is probably the bottom of my light is sitting at about two meters and the main area of my light source is probably sitting at about two meters 30 up in the air whereas the difference with this shot over here they are seated so the main source of the light in the middle of the soft box would have probably been positioned at about 1 meter 50 in that area. Okay, so other than that little lesson with the diagram, there's not too much to tell about all of these shots. What you can always dissect in an image is where the shadows are falling. So if you look at Dion under her chin, you get an idea of sort of more or less the height of where I was positioned. As I say, I'm probably about one and a half meters high. If you have a look at Elizabeth's face, you'll notice that I decided to place a little bit of shadow to define her cheekbone and her jawline. And all I can tell you is it's all done with the eye when you're working with constant light. So I'll direct my models into a shape. And when I'm happy with the image, I'll do final little tweaks on my light source. And that's about it. Elizabeth in heels is just over two meters. So this light is probably around about 230, 240 up in the air. The light probably 45 degrees off if, if I have a look at the shadow coming off of her legs. The main concern for me over here is to create a wonderful shadow with her jawline and underneath her chin. Fantastic structure in her face and you simply have to bring that out in the image and face turned into the light. So with this image of Dion, what was important to me was 
the volume of the fabric, massive amount of material on this dress and when she was sweeping it, it was sucking up all of the light in the studio. What I did with this one is I placed the light quite high and far off to the side, almost 90 degrees from me, to drop the shadow of the dress straight down onto the floor. That was the most important aspect for me in this image. Right, not too much to tell about this image. Once again, we're about 45 degrees off. Beautiful clean face turned into the light and making sure that it's high enough to be comfortably placed above Liz's head. Shadow, drama, movement. Highlight, 45 degrees off. What else can I tell you? Okay, so this shot is a great little lesson in the power of reflectors. If you have a look at Dion's face, you'll see how much light is being reflected off of Liz's shoulder to soften the shadows on Dion's face in comparison to how hard the shadows are in the other areas of the image. More than that, it's beautifully soft. It's the same little soft box, only a 60 by 90 with a grid on. No big changes, and that's about it for one light in the studio.